Hi everyone. How are you? I hope you are fit and healthy in these times. My name is Rishikesh and I welcome you all to my channel once again. If you haven't watched my previous videos yet, no need to worry, you will find the link in the description. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, also it is just one click away from, from being subscribed. From the time I have created this channel, I have been keep getting responses from you guys, asking queries, giving suggestions and most of the time it is from people from mechanical background and they want to study related course here in Germany. So that was the motivation for this video. In our university, there are two English taught programs for masters, embedded systems and mechatronics. Today we are going to talk about mechatronics. Here in this video, I will go through course structure, requirements, what you will be studying here, what are the areas you can study, what are the areas you can work after, after the masters, uh, what are the opportunities for jobs, uh, internships. So with this info, you will be able to make a decision whether to apply to this university or not. Or if you have got already an admit from this, from this university, then you will be able to make a decision that whether to join this university for this program or not. So when it comes to making a decision, what is better than to hear from people who has already gone through this. So today we will be discussing with my two mechatronic seniors who are about to finish their degrees. So let's go. So I have uh, Gaurav Kakade and Niramay Ketkar with me today. Both are my college seniors and they are from a master's mechatronics. Gaurav has just finished his uh, master thesis uh, and Niramay has finished his internship. So instead of I introducing you guys, why don't you guys introduce yourself, uh, starting with Niramay. Uh, hello all. So uh, my name is uh, Niramay Ketkar. I am from Pune. Uh, I'm 25 years old. Uh, I have studied I have studied mecha uh, mechanical engineering from uh, Sihagar Technical University. And uh, after that, I have worked for 1.5 years as a design automation engineer with uh, a boiler manufacturing company, Thermax. And after that, I decided to continue with the same field of automation. And I, I applied for this uh, master mechatronic course in the Ramsburg Weingarten University. So luckily I got the admit and uh, now I have completed an internship. Uh, I have complete, I am in my third semester. I have completed my internship with uh, a telecommunication company, uh, Huawei. And now I am also doing thesis. So yeah, that is that is my basic introduction. So to say. Yeah, hello everyone. My name is Gaurav. I come from a city called Ahmednagar from Maharashtra. Uh, I did my bachelor's uh, from Siegard Academy of Engineering Pune in Mechanical Engineering. Uh, also, uh, before doing my bachelor's, I did my diploma at Government Polytechnic Ahmadnagar. Uh, yeah, after completing my bachelor's, I straight away came for master's to Germany. I didn't get any uh, practical experience at any uh, industry in India. Uh, I applied with my transcripts from three semesters. And I got a conditional admit at RWU. Uh, the condition was that I was supposed to uh, submit my degree completion certificate and my final semester result before I uh, arrive in Germany. Uh, after coming to Germany, I specialized my course with a, a robot operating system. Like I took uh, ROS as specialization and deep, le deep learning. And uh, I did a internship in a company called IWT Wirtschaft und Technik in Friedrichshafen for two months, which was followed by uh, my master thesis. So I recently completed my master thesis and uh, with that I completed my masters. Uh, I had my defense on 31st of March and uh, now I'm looking for a full time job in the same field, like in the field of uh, ROS and deep learning. OK, uh, that was that was uh, great. Um, so uh, when you guys got this admit uh, from RWU, uh, you might have applied to other companies as well, sorry, uh, other universities as well. So when you got like, what are the other universities or what courses you got admits into? And uh, can I ask like, what was the reason? You might have uh, looked into some other things like, what was the, what was those reasons that you uh, decided to choose RWU. We decided to choose or decided to join RWU. So I applied to FAU to the MAP course and uh, to uh, Hochschule Allen for the polymer engineering okay. course. Uh, 
yeah and two uh, university of freiburg for sustainable systems engineering and two iw like uh, i already told i was in my final semester when i was doing the application so i didn't have the privilege to apply to many courses like not all universities give uh, admits to the students who are studying in final semester uh, and i got admit from two universities uh, like from uh, iw for the master mechatronics course and from uh, university of freiburg for uh, sustainable okay. systems engineering uh, but i chose masters mechatronics because i thought this course was m- much more promising and had a better future also i like the uh, course structure like uh, so yeah i i chose uh, okay. uh, mechatronics what about, at what about I'll the drama so uh, for me it was a, a really simple decision because um after after doing my uh, my job with thermax as a design automation engineer I, i i was clear that i wanted to go ahead in the field of automation so i applied only for i did not apply apply for a computational field which generally mechanical people do i applied only for robotics and uh, mechatronics courses but um from all my applications like i did applications with fh aachen then uh, zigen university and hamburg university out of all these universities i only got admit from uh, ravensburg weingarten okay. so for me the choice was very simple and secondly i also got admit from a us university called um, clemson okay but so it was a tussle between uh, doing masters in us and doing masters in germany yeah. so it was not not just about the university but it was also about the country which you want to live in so f- for me it was my choice was to go ahead with the german education system and uh, this course so i chose uh, rheinsberg weingarten university okay um so now uh, that you have completed around like both of you have almost finished your degrees so can you uh, tell us about like what are the subjects you study here Uh, in the masters mechatronics okay so i would say like the course is basically of three semesters and first two semesters are basically the subjects like the compulsory mm-hmm. subjects you have to uh, give exams for uh, and they include some generalized uh, subjects from mechanical uh, engineering field like uh, design of machine elements and integration of mechatronics electrical drives power electronics process interface equipments uh, advanced mathematics uh, yeah so in the first year uh, you uh, do all these subjects and in the third semester you can either do your master thesis or you can specialize in any optional uh, field or subjects like you can take additional subjects in your th- third semester like Uh, ai or deep learning or computer yeah. vision or uh, robotics or uh, ros yeah. so, so uh, yeah. to those who are watching this i would i would like to tell you that uh, the subjects that gorav has told you can go you can find those subjects in course curriculum you will find this uh, on the university website there will be a file called module handbook so you'll find all these details of the subjects you'll find there on the university website i would say the course selection uh, or the subject selection is uh, pretty uh, straightforward in 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 sense that the first semester is about general study so in first mm-hmm. semester you study general uh, subjects which you might have already studied in uh, engineering but yeah. so like they st- they teach you mathematics then there is i guess one subject related to strength of materials also then there is design design engineering um then there is electrical engineering Uh, and all these things so first semester is more more or less of a general study not very specialized in mechatronics and i i would say from second semester the course really starts opening up they give you a different uh, you can do different scientific projects or you can do uh, you can choose electives from second semester actually you can do it from first semester itself but first semester is a little bit busy so people generally select optional optional subjects from second semester onwards and as gaurav said from third semester it's really it's really up to you you can either do thesis or do internship so yeah it's a uh, the, basically the course starts opening up after second at second semester i would say okay 
uh, in the master mechatronics itself like what are the fields uh, like students can choose like what you said uh, in the like uh, in your second answer that there are many so many elective subjects and uh, students can choose whatever they like so for mass masters mechatronics what are those fields that students can choose after joining this course so yeah i'll try to name some of the fields like uh, i am uh, working in ros like uh, mm-hmm. in robot operating system yeah. and in computer vision so these are two fields uh, besides that you can learn a software called lab view and there are jobs in this uh, software uh, then you can uh, uh, work in mm-hmm. space programming or in india we yeah. called it plc okay. programming or automation uh, besides that uh, yeah then there is a robotics field robotic arm movement and uh, yeah. then there are control systems like there is one subject called as pi uh, so in that they teach you a little bit about con- uh, controls control systems and all these things mm-hmm. so control systems is also one of the subject but generally i have seen people going in either the robot uh, robotic operating system that is ros or plc so these are the two main fields which i have seen people uh, specialize into not so much in i have not seen so much so many people going in the control systems and uh, other subjects okay so um what like what type of work do we get uh, like we have, when we apply for internship or thesis uh, it will be really same as related to what we have studied or what projects we have done it will be related to that right so this actually depends on the mm-hmm. company you are applying like uh, uh, in the advertisement for this internship it will be mentioned like the tasks you are supposed to mm-hmm. do during this internship in my case uh, it was pretty much related to what i studied at the university mm, yeah besides i had to do some uh, configuration and uh, uh, set up of some robots uh, but yeah uh, besides that uh, it was all uh, what i expected and what i could used what ca- what i could use in okay, the that's, future that's great yeah for uh, for me also generally when i applied for this internship they would generally uh, give all the task and duties which you need to do mm-hmm. in the in the internship so yeah you you just have to cross check your profile according to the task and duties which they have given and uh, i think if if your profile is matching with the with the same you will get a chance or you will get an interview but uh, yeah as gaurav said it's it, it's really mentioned in the application of the job okay so uh, but how do you find such internship uh where where should we uh, look at like what are the sources to find such internship uh, master thesis so i would say uh, firstly you have to you have to see there are three or four websites mm-hmm. first is the steps st- stepstone website then zing and then uh, then i job uh, th- then there is one uh, um uh, then i i used i used linkedin and i got the internship via linkedin yeah. so linkedin is also one efficient uh, source i would say mm-hmm. linkedin i jobs uh, zing and um stepstone i would say these three or four websites would be really helpful and apart from that if you are interested so for example if i am interested in robotics then i would search for robotics companies in my area and i would go on the website of that particular company and i would see if there if there are vacancies for that job mm-hmm. and i would apply on the company's website yeah that's so and some of the students also use google map that is one of the tactics yeah. that uh, they on the google map they type in uh, c- company and they would see w- which all companies are there because we don't know how many companies are there we only know 10 or 15 big names like mercedes benz bmw and all these things we don't know different company so people use google map also <laughs> that is a very efficient way i would say yeah that that's right <laughs> gaurav yeah uh, besides what niramay mentioned i would say indeed is a mm-hmm. good website uh, uh, and also there are some german websites like uh, jobs in uh-huh. uh, sud west mm, yeah uh, you should also yeah, uh, look on that 
and uh, i would say zing is as important as linkedin mm-hmm. like in germany uh, most of the people use uh, zing as compared to yeah, linkedin yeah i would also yeah so i would suggest uh, every student master student should have a account on zing mm-hmm. also once in a year uh, we have yeah. a career fair mm-hmm. at our university uh, like which uh, lasts for two days and uh, companies from around the area like uh, from whole of baden wurtemberg and from bavaria mm-hmm. some companies from bavaria come there uh, and uh, give information about jobs and careers uh, career available at mm-hmm. their uh, companies uh, there is no such thing as yeah. placements mm-hmm. as in india but yeah it is just a platform uh, for you to get to know about uh, companies uh, around the universities lot of students uh, find uh, work student uh, jobs or internships in in this uh, career yeah, yeah. or True. career fair uh, what does the german language uh, like plays the role during our like employment and this uh, internship this is because for me um, like i am yeah. applying for now i have to start applying to the master thesis as now so this your advice will um, will be beneficial for me also not only the students who are going to join in yeah i would say in small companies uh, the language mm-hmm. plays a bigger role and in big companies it plays a smaller okay. smaller role like yeah in a big companies like uh, continental or zf uh, the language uh, would be mm-hmm. mainly english like there will be people coming from all over the globe and uh, the the language of communication would be english but in small companies like my company was of around 8 to 12 people and uh, we used to speak in german because most of the employees were german and so the language of communication was german so i would say uh, even if you don't have like fluent german knowledge uh, you should be able to yeah. understand you should understand what uh, the next person is uh, saying like you should at least have b1 level of german when you are applying for an internship okay. or a thesis all right those were the questions i thought students would like to know the answers of but if you have got more questions you can mention in the comments and i will try to answer them i would like to thank nirama and gaurav for sharing this wonderful information i have one more announcement to make i have created groups on discord and whatsapp for you guys you are welcome to join them and you can ask your doubts there itself also let me know in the comments how you find this video and please press the subscribe button it motivates me enough to keep on working that is all for today and i'll see you again